Hello Internet, my name is James Sabono. I'm a product design engineer and I did not think I would be making three videos about this topic, but here we are. The chess problem from Linus Tech Tips Wan Show. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out the other two videos I made before. If you do know what I'm talking about, then here's where we're at. I had a few more suggestions from people in comments and there were even some video responses. There was a question about how accurate my best solution was. Admittedly, I also wasn't 100% sure if the solution that I had put forward as the best solution was actually accurate. So here's the solution that I presented as the best solution. Basically a swept surface that had been used to do a cut thicken uh, with some full round fillets on the ends. And I had these fake milling bits in here to check interference. And a suggestion was to check the shape of the interference by oversizing the milling bit. So I was concerned with this method that it looked as if there might be a gap between this. And as I said, there were some people who were wondering whether this meant that it wasn't accurate because it looks like there is a gap. Now, something important to note with SolidWorks is that when you look at curved edges, such as this circle, at some zoom level, it will create a polygon like this. And that's just a display thing. So it's calculating this as a perfectly smooth curve. So if I go into the document properties here and I boost the display settings, it actually starts to look like a smoother curve. So usually these graphical glitches are just that, a graphical glitch. So now you can see actually it looks a lot less like there is a gap there. Now there was another good suggestion from somebody about checking the interference and that was to use the interference detection, which I thought was only available in assemblies, but it is available in parts. So if I click interference detection, I've got treat coincidence as interference checked. And if we press calculate, we can see here we've got two interferences. So one, which is along this line and the type of interference here is a coincident interference. So what that means is that they're not overlapping at all. They're meeting perfectly along this line. So that does show that this is perfect without any gaps the whole way along there. But we only have two interferences here, one along that line and then one here, which is along this surface, which also makes sense that this is completely coincident the whole way around. The top of this and the top of this are lining up perfectly, but we don't have coincident interference at the bottom here for some reason. Now, if I just use the measure tool, I can actually click on these two surfaces and I can see here that the selected items intersect. If I click the bottom surface, it says the selected items intersect. If I click the front line, they intersect. The back line, for some reason, doesn't intersect. Now I played around a little bit with this and what I found is that it was a little bit buggy. So if I change the angle that this milling bit is placed at to 35 degrees, and then I try this again, the interference detection. Now I'm getting interference at the bottom, but not at the top. So I realized there must be something going wrong here. Now, another really good suggestion that I got from people in the comments is instead of using a swept surface to use a ruled surface. So let me show you what that means. So I have this surface here, which was created from a single line sketch at the top that sits on this plane and it is swept along this J path. The sweep keeps its perpendicular relation to the center axis of this cylinder through this constraint, which is tangent to adjacent faces. Now it seems like this isn't doing the perfect job or it's creating some issue with the tangency. So I did as you guys suggested and I created this version using a ruled surface. You can see I've got a cylinder with the wrapped J on it. The ruled surface, I've just selected the elements of that wrap and selected normal to surface, which is the same thing as being perpendicular to the center axis. And I've created a ruled surface, which extends beyond the inner surface. Now it's not possible to extend it in both directions. I can only go one direction or the other. So what I did just to be safe, I used the extend surface to extend this surface using the same surface, just so that it extends beyond the outer surface of the cylinder. Then I just used the same cut thicken and the same full round fillets at both ends and the same milling bit bodies. Now, if we go to interference detection and click calculate, you can see that we've got three interferences. We have one which is along the bottom line, which is a coincident interference. So it's not overlapping, it's lining up perfectly. We have one at the top and we have one around this whole surface. So this is exactly what we expect. And this is telling us that this is in fact mathematically perfect. 
we have no overlaps, we have no gaps, it's perfectly coincident. And we have a pretty clean feature tree here with only nine features. Uh, the rest of the stuff is only needed for checking. So it's very simple and completely accurate. So I'm finally confident in saying that this solution that I've presented not only is the one that I think is the best solution, but it also is mathematically accurate and I'm confident of that now. In saying that, there are a few extra things that I want to address. One issue is that with this method, you need to create the fillets at each end to match the milling bit. The solution that used a swept body would automatically create those fillets at the end, but unfortunately the swept body still isn't working. I actually had high hopes for the swept body solution, and I hope that SolidWorks could fix it in the future so it works a bit better. I realized that I actually made a mistake in the last video. I showed this solution where I created two swept cuts using a body, and in the second one, I forgot to make the profile tangent to adjacent faces. So I wanted to show that even when you do select that, you do still get some weird geometry. It doesn't work perfectly. Now something else that was suggested was to use a fit spline to create a continuous surface for the swept cut with a body. So I tried that here. I put the wrap onto the cylinder, I created a 3D sketch, and this 3D sketch contains a fit spline, which fits the elements of that line from the wrap that creates one continuously tangent path. So from that path, I was able to create a cut sweep. The interesting thing that happened here is although I had a continuous path and I had the profile twist set to tangent to adjacent faces, when you complete the feature, it has some really weird behavior. So this clearly is not tangent to adjacent faces and you also see some ripples here. So like I said, I had high hopes for the swept cut using a body, but unfortunately it's really not up to par, at least in SOLIDWORKS. I hope they can make that better in the future. Now the reason why I was hoping that a swept cut using a body would be able to work is because that would allow for more different kinds of cut paths, such as cut paths that have a right angle or a corner. So if it wasn't just a continuously smooth J, but if it had a cut corner like this. Now I achieved this using the ruled surface and cut thicken method. My only concern with this is that you do have to make sure that you add the fillet in this corner and the fillet needs to be the right radius. So this is a circular radius of one millimeter. That gives us the result that we need, but that's not automatic. So you do need to check and make sure that this is the correct radius to fit the tool. And if we add in the cutting bit models, including one in this corner, we can double check the interference and you can see we have both sides of the tool bit down the bottom, the top surface of this tool bit and this radius of this tool bit. So all of these are lining up perfectly. So this is working perfectly. You do need to remember to put in this fillet with the correct radius. So as I said, if this was a swept cut using a body, I wouldn't need to worry about this fillet because it would be created automatically from the swept body. But since the swept bodies don't seem to work very well, then we have to do this with the surface. We can do this mathematically perfectly. We just need to make sure that we check all of our radiuses. Now, the last thing is that a few people mentioned doing this on a real CNC machine, you wouldn't make the width of the slot the exact width of the cutting bit, which is totally true. But some people said that makes this whole argument pointless. It doesn't. You still need the walls of the slot to be parallel to the center line, which is perpendicular to the center axis. That's what this whole thing is about. But yes, it's true. The slot should be bigger than the milling bit. And luckily in this example, it's as simple as just increasing the cut thicken. And then we have a larger slot and you can see there is space around our milling bits. We could easily generate a cam program to cut this slot using two millimeter bits and the actual bolt action shaft, which would fit into this part, would have perfectly smooth interaction along its edges rather than running along a knife edge. So that's it for this video and hopefully for this topic, although I have really enjoyed reading all of your comments and suggestions, it's been really fun. It's been a nice brain exercise. You know, a lot of people are still saying, there's no point in doing all of this. It's a waste of time, waste of money, whatever. This is about improving our skills, improving our knowledge. There are a lot of valid reasons for doing this in production as well, which a lot of people have pointed out in the comments. Moral of the story is, I'm not getting paid to do this. Linus Tech Tips aren't getting paid to do this. We don't need to do it, but it's an interesting problem to solve, and I'm glad that we could solve it together. And I'm confident that we have a perfect solution now. So thank you all for watching again. 
Really appreciate it. And hopefully you'll check out some more of my videos on different topics or different design projects. Enjoy your day and I'll see you on the next one.